Okay. Um, my name is Erica Haig, and I'm interviewing Kelvin Smith, Smith mm -hmm. for Georgia State University uh, Women's March Oral History Project. The date is March 26, 2017, and the interview is taking place in Talking Rock, Georgia. Um, so the first question I have for you is, what year were you born? 1957. And where were you born? Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, I'm an Atlanta native. Um, <laughs> can you describe your family's political leanings? Well, let's see. Um, we um, didn't talk much about politics, and uh, I think uh, they might have uh, uh, followed the trends of the time. They voted Democrat you know, uh, back in the early 60s. Um, mm -hmm. Their political leanings, um, it's hard to say, because like I said, they didn't talk about it much. They uh, were, I think, pro-civil rights, because I grew up pro-civil rights and, and uh, uh, got into the environmental movement and all like that, but they didn't, uh, they, their, their political philosophy was kind of not too much troublemaking, just don't make trouble. <laughs> Uh, what is your profession? I am retired from uh, federal employment. I worked up in uh, the Baltimore, Washington area uh, as a computer programmer and an analyst. Um, and uh, um, I was uh, uh, did that for 33 years. Uh, what political party do you support? Right now, uh, I um, am registered Democrat. And uh, I've voted green, and I will vote independent, depending on who matches me on, on things that are important to me. So it's more policy than party? Right? Yeah, more policy than party, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've voted green before, uh, and I was registered green uh, when you could do that in Maryland. You could do that. And uh, uh, now I'm, I'm registered Democrat. Have you been involved in political activities in the past? And if so, describe them. <laughs> By law, while I was working for the federal government, I could not participate in a lot of political activity. I, the Hatch Act prevented me. Uh, now, um, but I did read a lot about uh, especially progressive politics, and I wanted to be more involved, and now that I'm retired, um, uh, we've been, you know, my wife and I have been watching all of this very, very intently, and we're very much involved. Um, and we, we went to the Women's March this year in Washington. It was my first uh, activism. <laughs> um, Would, uh, if the Hatch Act hadn't prevented you from... Hmm participating, would there have been a previous demonstration that you would have felt strongly enough to? I'm not sure about that. I might have attended some pro-environment things. The uh, environment is very important to me. Um, um, but uh, there wasn't a lot that I thought had the urgency of what's happening now. Uh, do you have family members who have participated in activist movements? Mm. Well, my wife and my daughter were with me at the Women's March, braving that crowd, and uh, we've participated together. Um, I, I'm not aware of uh, other family members at other times that have done so. This was kind of unprecedented. Um, why did you want to march on January 21st? Because uh, the... Um, the causes of social justice and equality, especially for women, um, uh, are uh, they're threatened now more than, than ever before. Uh, we are at a place where we stand to take steps backward. Where um, and um, um, I had carried a sign that basically was the centrality of what I felt about it, was America's women deserve so much better, not worse. And I didn't want to see us moving backwards. Is that what your sign said on mm -hmm. it? America's women deserve so much better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so why did you choose to attend the DC march rather than a local march? Well, that was a matter of, of uh, circumstance, but it was also 
it was it was fortunate circumstance. We were there visiting my daughter and her family, uh, visiting our grandkids, but we had also known that this march was coming up, and it was going to be right in Washington D.C., where we had just voted in all these people that threatened to set things back, and that's the perfect place to be. It's a little edgy for me because I hate crowds, social anxiety, but uh, that was a huge crowd, but it was also a very supportive crowd to be in. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about um, how you got to the march and your okay. experience there? All right. Well, we had planned it uh, for we had planned it for a couple of months to, to be there for the march, and we... Um, were uh, visiting with family in Adelphi, Maryland. It's nearby. It's a suburb of D.C. And uh, we uh, uh, all piled in the car. Her daughter, uh, her and myself, my, you know, my wife uh, and myself. And um, we uh, drove to the metro station, took that incredibly crowded metro ride into D.C., and disembarked and it was just a sea of people and at that point we basically just kind of followed the tide of people where we want you know in the general direction where we wanted to go but that you know that's how we got there and uh immediately there were people with the signs and the little hats and everything going in the general direction that and and we uh we followed them again it was a very uh very well-behaved crowd mm -hmm. and, and very supportive law enforcement there too. So getting to it uh, uh, was, uh, was, it was easy. We wanted to get to the, the, to, to the uh, National Mall uh, uh, and, and be able to uh, see what was going on, face the Smithsonian and the Capitol building, just be there in the midst of it. And uh, that's what we did. Uh, did you, uh, you came on the metro, uh, mm -hmm. was there anything that you remember as like a poignant moment uh, while you were on the metro or disembarking? Once we got off the metro and started walking toward, um, towards it, um, uh, there was a woman there in a pink hat and she handed my wife a woman card. You know, she played the woman card immediately so that my wife could play the woman card. And uh, she, I... I'm not sure if Wendy had ever seen one of those, so I explained to her what it was, and uh, that that was that was kind of the moment we had our signs, we were ready to go, and she handed us a card. <laughs> uh, so you uh, spoke a little bit earlier about how, uh, for this march in particular, you felt that social justice and equality were the most important issues for you for this movement. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit more why that is? Well, um, it was kind of, during the past, during the last few years of my um, um, federal employment, I would discuss with some of my friends, we had a kind of an internal online community, and we would discuss things that mattered. And one of the things that mattered to me strongly was I would talk about equality in terms of equality for all. I think everyone should be equal. But what got pointed out to me and what I had to learn, and I wasn't really on track with it at, at, at first, was the concept of, of, of privilege. That, you know, the implicit privileges that I as a male, a white person, hetero, Christian, um, enjoyed pretty much without thinking about it. And that really, uh, it struck me for, I think, the first time in my life, you know, born and raised in the South, uh, you kind of accept social things as given, and you don't even think about them. And like I said, my family was not a, a whole lot about political troublemaking. So I didn't think about all of that. And now here, here it was, something kind of pulling me up short in terms of my own starry-eyed view of how the world should be. Yeah, it should be equal for everybody, but some people do have a hard time, a hard time of that. If you're born female, you have a harder time from the beginning. And that struck me, and it became very much more something that I wanted to uh, be active in, uh, seeing that... Uh, 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 
helping women to, to achieve that, that equality that's been denied them, even now. Who uh, introduced the idea of inherent privilege to you? Oh, let's see. Um, it was uh, it was some wonderful young people that we had working there in the, in the same general field that, that I was in working, um, and um, um, a woman named Marie, a young woman named Marie. Uh, I was talking about how that I had been. Oh, I was bragging about how I had written to the uh, EEO office about, you know, how we, we should really maybe stop concentrating on affirmative action and just worry about non-discrimination. That was, that was so important to me. And she had, said, she had said, I want you to watch. This guy's coming in next week. He's going to speak at the auditorium where we were, and he's going to talk about, uh, you know, white male privilege. And she directed me to the, the speech. I didn't attend it physically, but they had a video transcript. Later, it was actually sponsored by, by our, um, um, by, by our people. And I watched it and it raised so many questions and I, you know, got online immediately to Marie and others and was asking them questions and of course, there were opinions all over the place. So, you know, a lot of people were, were going, you, you tell them, Calvin, and, or this and that and the other. And I was learning so much as I go. And, and I, um, Marie was very, not Marie, Marissa. Her name was Marissa. But she was very, very eye-opening in terms of, of that. And a lot of the young people there who, who came in really had some good views that, you know, woke me up. And I hope others... Is it uh, something that uh, any of your older colleagues that may have had similar views to you, did they also possibly attend or watch this? Do you have discussions with them at all? Or? Well, um, I think some of them did. I mean, there, there were, um, this was the online community that, uh, the online community that cared to talk a lot about this sort of thing. Sometimes you were, with where I worked was a large agency for the Department of Defense and we were very widely scattered all over and sometimes it was hard to meet up you know physically with the people who felt like you did and at the same time there's also the culture of you know kind of uh, keep your head down do your job don't get into all of this there there was something of that too that uh, it wasn't really a social thing you know a social movement there as it was uh, I mean, it was more of an online social movement. And sometimes I would see these folks, uh, but uh, a lot of times we were intellectual, you know, analytical introverts, and we didn't uh, so much meet and talk and, you know, plan. Uh, you know, of course, we couldn't plan anything because political activity again. Um, what other issues did you see uh, represented at the DC March and how did you feel about those issues? Okay, uh, I think I saw some things, uh, definitely the, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement was out in force and I'm very supportive of that. Uh, the uh, racial justice is uh, uh, very, very important and like I said, I grew up in a, in a in a culture where if you fought for that, you were seen to be a troublemaker. And that, you know, sure, yeah, you need to make trouble sometimes. Um, but I saw that represented there. I saw a little bit of, of uh, the environmentalists, the acti you know, activism for uh, environmental concerns. And uh, um, there was a little scattering of, of all, you know, all different kinds of, of, of uh, progressive activism um, uh, the um, people talking about the um, the popular vote and you know the electoral system, you know governmental reform, the kind of stuff you would uh, you would see in, in various progressive uh, uh, you know political emphases. Um, what did you did you were there any that sort of like resonated with you or any that you were personally against but still felt? Let's see. Well, I think just about everything resonated with me. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, in terms of, uh, I'm, 
uh, environmentalism, and you know, uh, I'm uh, I I'm, uh, want to be active. There's a march for science coming up, you know, against uh, science denial, and that's very important uh, to me. Um, Mom and Dad were science teachers, and they raised me to respect science, even as we were Southern Baptists. Um, and uh, I, I saw, I see that as, you know, really important. That affects everybody. The environmentalist issues affect everybody, and you know, the even those who cannot vote because they're plants and animals, and you know, our children and and all like that. Um, and uh, so yeah, that that that, I didn't see anything that I really. That, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, uh, I know they're, they're, um, they're, they were talking about some people are, you know, agree on everything except the abortion issue and all like that. And I can see the concern there, but at the same time, a women's reproductive right, uh, that's important to me. Um, before the march, what were you expecting? Hmm. I don't know uh, if I was. I know how I know it can get crowded in DC. I didn't realize just how many, many, many people would would be there. That was a huge, huge crowd, and you kind of had to go with it. The the only thing I could compare it to was one time I was in New York City in Rockefeller Center at Christmas time. And we were fearful for our lives in case we got knocked down and this sea of people would just swarm over us. And it was that kind of, of uh, a group, except, but at, at the same time, the other thing that surprised me about it was not its size, but like I said, its civility. Everybody was so good to each other. Uh, we had to get across to meet up with a, 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 uh, another friend, um, uh, or actually the daughter of a friend who we were told would want to maybe meet up with us. We never did meet up with her, but we tried. We tried to get across the mall, and we were kind of, the three of us were kind of struggling to get somewhere. And actually, no, it was my wife and I. We were struggling to get back to her daughter who had gone on, gone on ahead. And there was this um, woman who had brought her middle school class to demonstrate. They had their signs and all, and they were in these little rain slickers. They were matching yellow rain slickers, and they were all in a kind of a chain. And she said, hold on and come with us, and she took us across the street and uh, helped us out. Um, what, did, what did you think about having middle schoolers there? I thought that was great. They're learning. I mean, the kids were just so great. I mean, they were chanting. Uh, the, the, you know, they weren't chanting. It, 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 there were some of the slogans were kind of PG rated because it had to do with women's rights and, and stuff like that or had to do with a lot of uh, really angry verbal vernacular. Uh, but they were, they, you know, the kids were jumping up and down doing, you know, anti-Trump slogans. And, and I had no problem with that at all. They're learning uh, civil disobedience. They're learning participation in democracy. You know, when it counts, the, the, kind, of, uh, the kind of alert we're all on now that we, we haven't had it before in our lifetimes. And these kids are seeing it firsthand. And it's great that, they're, that, that we're there. Um, what were you hoping to get out of the experience? Hmm. I was uh, um, I was just hoping to get my voice heard in Washington in a way that my vote by itself doesn't do. And I was hoping to show solidarity and uh, but and, you know also feel the solidarity that, that we had and and uh, however we're represented in the press, you know, just come to a realization of what it's really like. How, how many people, how strongly do we feel what's really going on? And, uh, and uh, yeah, that, I, I, that's what I was hoping to and what I got out of it. Mm -hmm. Were your friends, families, neighbors, were they supportive of this or is it something that you talked about with them? <laughs> Um, Either before or after. Before or after the, the uh, yeah I've I've got I've got friends um, I'm a, a, a 
amateur and professional actor, and, and that's a big community that I move around. And uh, uh, they're, you know, all over the place politically. They, the, uh, there, there, there's been some cases where uh, not so much, I mean, talk about the Women's March. Uh, I got some support from friends, and a lot of them stayed silent about it. Uh, 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 not sure quite how to take it. I, I don't think all of them are sure quite how to take uh, uh, me suddenly coming out as an activist, I guess. But uh, um, yeah, mostly supportive, yes. Mm -hmm. um, did you talk about uh, the experience at all uh, with any of your neighbors? Since you are in a <laughs> sort of interesting mix, of, interesting uh, mix. Uh, I, I yeah, I'm, I talked about some of it with uh, uh, not so much neighbors. Uh, again, my friends who live in Jasper. Some of them. Uh, there, there's a uh, uh, there's a large. You know, they voted red pretty much across the board. A lot of them did, and uh, and uh, some of them. Uh, I mean, some of you. You're not. You're not going to get the message through to some of them because no matter what you say, the, their at, the, the attitude that, that bothered me most coming from them was the, oh, come on attitude where, you know, they, they have absolutely no sympathy with what you're taking seriously. No, no, no. It doesn't resonate with them at all. And that was the most troublesome uh, you know, among my na you know, neighbors and friends were, were those kind of attitudes. Um, but, and really around here, generally what I've encountered in terms of it, it there, there will be some support. I mean, you can see it on the social media. They'll like all your posts or they'll share and all like that. But a lot of them will simply be silent about it. Just won't say a word. Um, um so... I'd like you to describe sort of uh, your fellow marchers while you were in the march in D.C. Uh, mm. I know that personally I sort of had different groups that I was sort of with at different points during the march, but um, anyone that stood out in particular, anyone that you enjoyed marching with, mm. anything like that? Well, when we we, uh, we passed by some of the folks and, and, and took photos, there, there were men at the march, and they were uh, uh, carrying, you know, this is a, to wonderful women's rights signs. Some of, some of them were wearing the pink hats as well, and that was great. Um, the groups that we were with, we kind of oriented um, um, uh, ourselves to follow a group that, we, and th each group would have its own chant that it would be, you know, be chanting. Uh, uh, some of them uh, were uh, chanting along, we need a leader, not a creepy tweeter. And we uh, go along with that, and um, um, uh, because it was the day after the inauguration, um, uh, there was one group that we marched with for a good long time that were were were, uh, were saying, "We're not going away. Welcome to your first day," and we thought that was great, and we just marched with that, and the police guided us around, you know, everything, and. Um, so that uh, we we kind of um, there, there were like distinct groups just dis send, sending out distinct messages. Uh, there was a um, uh, you know we we'd pass by the you know the Black Lives Matter groups and and all the other different uh, focal groups, and uh, so that that was kind of how we gravitated, uh, and the, the, it was it was almost musical the songs. You're the rhymes carrying us along. Mm -hmm. um, so what were your feelings, or how did your feelings change, I guess, before, during, and then after the march? Hmm. That's hard to say. Um, I, I, I mean, our feelings... Uh, my, my feeling and my wife's feeling as well um, have been more uh, about doing more you know it, it was like we got done with that and we thought what next what do we do when we're back in our houses when we're out you know doing things and uh, uh, our 
you know, we've stepped up our, our you know, calling our congresspersons and uh, uh, being, you, just our general involvement has been greater. We've started uh, attending indivisible meetings and uh, have uh, come to know uh, the, the local community of support and um, that has changed. That's been a good change. It's gotten us out and about more you know, with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, did you feel at all um, isolated before uh, with your views or? Yeah, kind of. Uh, it kind of did feel isolated. Uh, um, I'm, like I said, with my mood and just my general w way of doing things, I isolate myself sometimes. But, you know, um, um, there was that sense of isolation. There would be those of us who were kind of like-minded. And we'd, uh, I mean, like in the theater, you know, most of the leadership of the theater are kind of neutral, if not conservative. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and again, it was the, the, the young people, you know, calling me aside and saying, we agree with you. And, and or, you know, we, uh, we, are, we are glad that you're here and you've got these ideas and you can work with us. I mean, because even in uh, the field of theater, uh, you, you uh, sometimes want to get a little bit of, 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 the kind of the kind of ideas you want to promote with the plays you put on and, and, and all like that. They don't, I mean, the theater group I'm in doesn't shy away from, from any topic, but uh, uh, sometimes you want to encourage more, you know, uh, the, what you say is uplifting, you know, have, have fewer, uh, very safety zone southern comedies and more of the edgy stuff you know someday you know but uh um yeah we've had uh, more conversations about that and and more little friend you know friends are popping up and we're getting them involved in the invisible stuff too you know as, as they can how did you get involved in uh, your indivisible group well, uh, Wendy found out who uh, uh, in Jasper was was working on it, and I had already uh, heard something about you know Indivisible and being founded on kind of the Tea Party sort of organizational ideas, and I know how important consensus building is, uh, and uh, uh, we were calling our congressman and we were joining social media groups and we started. Uh, attending local uh, coffee shop events and uh, got to know some of the people. Um, so did a lot of the people that are in your indivisible group or have a lot of them, did they attend marches either locally or at the, the national one at DC and have you all talked about that experience? Uh, th uh, they've talked about some of the marches. Uh, they, they've attended some of the marches, and, and we've we've talked about them. I've just I've myself have just been to a few meetings. Yeah, my wife has been to more of them, um, and um, um, they th they talked about uh, uh, wh what they mainly talk about is is what to do in you know future marches, how to organize, and there was a ACLU meeting in Dahlonega my wife went to, uh, or it was streamed to a group in Dahlonega, and, and uh, uh, basically um, not so much talking about the ones that we've done, but preparing for the next one, you know, the, the, what to do after that, which, I, yeah, that's kind of a good way to uh, go about it, I think. Um. <laughs> um, you talked a little bit before about uh, being sort of anxious while at the march. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you could describe more about the atmosphere and how that made you feel going through the march, either before the march, at the rally, if you attended that, I'm not sure, um, or during the march or on the way back after. Mm -hmm. um, are we... Um When I, when I was attending and, and the, the, the crowd that was there, again, like I said, we were going with the flow, kind of following the current. That was the, the safest to go. That was the easiest for me. You know, I can get, uh, like I said, it's anxious. I can get panicked in a grocery store uh, or just irritated with 
trying to figure out who to dodge and how to get down the aisle. Um, there was curiously none of that because, like I said, it was such a supportive group and everyone was accommodating to each other. And um, the flow, or the various flows, uh, were, uh, were good. I mean, sometimes you, you, you would get stuck and uh, that would be a, a kind of frustrating, but it was, uh, um, it, at no point did I feel like I was getting panicked or pushed, really. Um, I mean, there, you, certainly you're holding on to the middle schoolers, the little train of middle schoolers, getting where you're going as you can. And then when we got there, we figured out, well, that wasn't exactly where we needed to be. We needed to get out. And that took the longest time. But um, really, the, the supportive atmosphere was, uh, it, it, it was profound. And it, it, it got us through and it kept it kept it very positive. Were you able to hear any of the speakers at any time? Yes, we were, uh, we, um, again, we, we, I think we were kind of more moving back and forth and, and, uh, you know, carrying the signs and, 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 uh, being supportive in that way. But as we passed by the, 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 the mall and could see the, could see the monument, could see the Capitol, and could hear the speakers and the music, and and we, it would, um, it was such a crowd, and that was one of the things, the, the 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 sounds of the crowd, everyone chanting, those who were not really close to the uh, to the speakers, they were off chanting, and we were in that group that were chanting, so that we get snippets of what was being said by the actual, uh, the you know the speakers who were supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it came off in, in bits and pieces, really. Um, so the chants that they were uh, saying in the area before, during the rally, do you, can you remember any of those? Well, let's see. There was the one about the tweeting that I had said before. We need a leader, not a creepy tweeter. Um, uh, the little kids were, <laughs> the group of little kids were... Uh, uh, jumping up with their signs going, hey, hey, ho, ho, Donald Trump has got to go. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, you, it's, it's like your first day in office and you're looking down and there's these little kids jumping up and down saying you've got to go. Um, and, um, let's see, trying, um, the, uh, we're not going away, welcome to your first day. That was, uh, those three are the ones that, 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 that I really remember now. Did you lead any chants? Did you start any no, I just joined in with with with, with everybody's. Uh, uh, no, um, I didn't lead in any. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a little bit before about uh, the law enforcement. I'd like to mm -hmm. have you describe any interactions that you had with them, or anything that you saw that they were doing or not doing. Okay. Yes, um, we were almost. Up we were kind of easing back off the mall. We were going to uh, actually go try to get out of the main flow of things and get somewhere to go eat. Um, and uh, we were passing by this group where uh, next to one of the buildings, these there was like one or two guys uh, standing up on the steps or on the side of the steps making kind of anti-march remarks you know just occasionally and i think they were uh the police the dc police and uh uh were aware of what was going on and were just basically wanting to make sure it did not get disorderly and the, um at the same time there was an ambulance that needed to get through for somebody i think there was a cardiac alert that somebody had and so around both of these things, the, um, uh, there, were, there was uh, one guy in a Jeep in camo, or you know, a few guys in Jeep in camo, and, and the, the, the lots of regular police cars, and they were very carefully guiding us around the long way so that we're not in the midst of this. And as, as they're guiding our, our little stream of people around, 
the guys up on, you know, standing up were just saying a, a couple of things, you know, basically, uh, uh, we had the election, you know, blah, blah, you know, the, the kind of their side of the people have spoken. Well, you know, the people are speaking right now. Um, and but uh, again, it was done very orderly and everyone was very, very cooperative. I didn't see I didn't see a single act of violence or, or a, a very little belligerence. Um, how did you feel as a as a male attending as a as a male ally? <laughs> That's that was interesting because uh, I got in line for uh, one of the Porta Johns, and there was a guy from um, Oklahoma who was he has his own blog, and he was asking me the same question. He wanted to ask me a few questions, and asked me about being a, a man at the women's march. And the way I feel about it is it, it, it's so important for us all to be there, you know, male and female. And, and uh, uh, for, for those of us who have this uh, unmerited privilege of, of, of our gender to speak up for, for women. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it just makes it all the more important. Did you get to speak with any other men uh, while at the march? Uh, well, d d there was just um, you know Matt, Matt from uh, Oklahoma doing his his blog, I guess. Um, he was he was the main one. He was the only one really. Um, you uh, talked a little bit earlier about the opposition protesters that you saw um, and some interactions that. Uh, you witnessed with them. Mm -hmm. Was there, aside from that one instance, uh, were there any other opposition protesters that you saw while you marched or before, after, mm -hmm. anything like that? No, actually, that was, it, it was that one little island <laughs> of it, and otherwise, uh, you, you know, it, it, was, it was kind of a, a, a very united front. Um. So, what did you? I don't know if you saw any coverage of it in the media or not, but uh, of the march, mm -hmm. uh, can you explain what you saw either uh, the day of or after, um, and how, what you thought about that coverage? Mm -hmm. um, media portrayal, I guess. I saw uh, some of the photos that people took from way above the crowd, and, and the articles that were written about the huge crowd. Not only the huge crowds. But how that uh, uh, differed from how the White House was describing it, and uh, uh, frankly, from my viewpoint, that was an incredibly full national mall. That was just a huge, you know, unprecedented for my experience in D.C. A huge crowd. The metros were just barely keeping up with getting people to and from. Uh, they did a wonderful job too, and the the Metro Police were telling us they had never seen such a crowd on the DC Mall. Um, that was people who had been working Metro for decades, um, and so uh, that it was definitely an impression of you know what a huge, gratifyingly huge response this was getting. Um. So you uh, mentioned that uh, you got separated at one point in time from your oh. group. Mm -hmm. So um, how did you all manage to stay together? Or what forms of communication did you use? Mm. We tried to use our cell phones, and they were kind of intermittent on the mall. Uh, there were uh, just the, uh, I think the abundance of signals there in the air just kept that from happening too much but we we'd get spotty messages through and we'd say we uh because we used to li live around there we lived in greenbelt maryland which is one of the suburbs my wife and i and and our daughter did and we had been to dc a lot for smithsonian for things events on the mall so we knew uh, landmarks where we could gather or, or uh, uh, and we had a plan B also we, we said well, okay we cannot make it to the end of in, you know to Independence Avenue and whatever 
So we're going to stand here and you come back over here and, and meet us when, when you can. And uh, um, uh, eventually we worked back together and met again. But it took a while. It was a challenge. Um, were there any uh, moments that stand out? I think I've sort of asked you the same question, but hmm. are there any other moments that stand out uh, during the march, after the march, uh, that sort of related to that experience? Oh. Hmm. Oh, let me see. Um, well, like I said, seeing the kids doing the demonstrating and jumping up and down, being just so happy to 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 be helping out with the grown up world, um, and you know all the 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 men I saw, you know, uh, participating, helping, wearing the hats, uh, the. Um, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, people that were there carrying their signs and you know finding a, a kind of a, a unity in a, in, a par in their par parallel and very necessary message, um, and again just the overall civility of everyone there that was what came out to me the most. Um, did you feel emotional at any time during the march? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I won't say I got a, like a, a lump in the throat mo moment, but uh, um, you know, we were walking in the, the streets of D.C. where you know people were still going up and down, holding their posters, and uh, the the main emotion that I had had uh, was you know all these people working together so hard you know at, at this I was gonna carry my sign I'm not gonna get tired I'm gonna carry my sign and I did uh, luckily I didn't <laughs> I didn't get I didn't have too bad sore muscles afterward but that, that was an emotional thing just it was the emotion was one of, of, of ener you know, common energy um, it, uh, it, it wasn't a really sentimental emotion, I guess. It was uh, more the, just the feeling of support. Um, so, uh, on the way back to where you were staying with mm -hmm. your daughter, um, can you sort of describe the experience and the trip back? Um... We, uh, she had a few years before, a certain, uh, uh, worked at one of the D.C. restaurants, and that's where we were able to get a seat and go eat, and we did that, and kind of decompressed. We had spent some time before our reservation time came up at this nice, spacious library, and it was just a nice feeling of quiet. And we were just going to take our time because we knew that it was going to end around there and then would be the rush to the metro of everybody. And we had our meal. And uh, then we um, went down to the metro and looked at the boards and we saw that there was, uh, um, there was one that needed repair that was stopped and they were single, what they would call single tracking. They were just having one one you know one way in and out um and um but that was when we talked to the uh metro police you know while we were just sitting and waiting for for, th for things to move again and uh, they were telling us about how this was the hugest crowd ever um and then uh it, it is uh one thing while i uh, worked and lived in that area that I learned and it was reinforced that day is you can have a crazy, crazy crowd in DC and it's all going to, at the end of the day, just kind of eventually move and you can trust that you're gonna get, you're gonna get out, you're gonna get back to your car. Zooming here after 
um, the generator turned on. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you were uh, talking a little bit about um, the trip home, I guess. Yes. Yeah. The, um, uh, the Metro Police, and, uh, like I said, were, were, they were amazed at the, the size of the crowd, too. And, and uh, it, um, trip home was good. I had read things since, since we moved back down to Georgia. I would read things in recent years and things that friends had posted about uh, the metro system having so many more repairs and outages and all like that. But um, it, um, I mean, there was a, there was a delay, but um, then we got home and uh, um, it, it worked out very well. Uh, people percolated out of there again very civilly you know. did you have any interactions with any of your daughter's neighbors or anyone on the way back to the metro station that lived in DC um, well it's let's see we were uh, uh, my my uh, my daughter who you know lives in Adelphi you know like I said we've been there uh, and interacted with them worked with them um, before the march we had worked uh, um, yeah, and had the had the the, uh, the grandkids in to help with you know the crayons were out we had our posters out and so we were working on our posters that said what we wanted to say and they were working on there are posters that said squiggle, and it was great. Uh, we uh, uh, worked together and um, you know talked about it afterwards. Uh, we were usually we're watching something like Wally or Curious George or, or something like that. When we got back from the march, we were uh, 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 Emily, my daughter, was you know putting up the putting the news on the big screen, we were watching the, re, you know, the uh, DC reactions and, and assessment of, of, of the march and what had happened. And so, uh, and, you know, talking some about it too. Um, did the grandkids understand what was going on? Oh no, they're, uh, one of them's three and the other one's, uh, 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 uh you know, toddler you know one one and some months so they, they didn't they didn't really understand uh the but i mean we didn't keep any of it from them but uh their uh, their assessment of it was was, was you know they were going to go upstairs and stay with uh, their uh, grandparents their other grandparents and and their their uncles and uh, just have a good time doing that um so how did you feel the day after the march about um, what had taken place? And mm, it was, uh, that was kind of neat because that was the day that we were going to uh, start heading out to drive back down to Georgia. And on the way, uh, I've got a cousin who lives in Virginia who was also at the march with his daughter and we got to meet with in fact, he offered his house for us to spend the night there since, you know, all, all, all everything had, had, had uh, made it run so that we, we got a very late start getting back home. Uh, and he opened his house to us, and uh, um, he's, um, he's a wonderful intellectual guy. He's a little bit older than I am, and we've been buddies since I can remember, and, you know, just discussing stuff that goes over the head of our other cousins sometimes or or is just too weird for our other cousins maybe but um we uh we talk you know politics and and uh uh and and um how you know wendy was you know giving her own perspectives as well and uh that was great because you know it kept us uh kept the ideas alive in our heads and and, and uh, we got to share our opinions on the crowd on getting around and and all like that um, and uh, again John and, and, and his daughter uh, they were there we were there and there was just so much going on that actually hearing the speakers you know we were uh, um, 
you know, watching on the news and, and watching the night before at, at my daughter's house, at, at our, our daughter's house, um, that was when you could hear the speakers hear what they had said and, and, and all like that. And that was, uh, um, it was interesting to absorb that part of it afterwards. Did it have an impact on uh, anything that you sort of experienced while you th while you were there? That the speakers afterwards sort of um, matched up in some way. Yeah, because I, I once in a while, and I'm just now remembering this. Once in a while, as we were going along, we would hear just an oceanic crowd reaction to something, and I was curious, you know, what was being said, what. Uh, what were they talking about? And, and um, um, uh, so, my, you know, uh, the video of Michael Moore talking to them and, and uh, um, uh, lots of the other speakers. Uh, Ashley Judd, you know, what, I think she had spoken to the crowd. And, uh, you know, lots of interesting crowd reaction. I had been curious about, you know, okay, just what are they saying? What, what are they talking about? Um, and uh, uh, that just the noise and the flow of everything keeping us kind of disconnected from that. Um, and that might have been the biggest challenge was, you know, connecting what was being set up on the podium to what was going on down, you know, down in the crowd. Um, how have you been feeling since the march? Um, uh, Feeling kind of energized, but also kind of falling back into the routine of you know daily life and and uh, um, 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 we've been calling our senators and and uh, uh, part of my social thing means that sometimes a phone call is the last thing I want to do, especially if I think I'm going to get through to a real person. Uh, I, I'd rather just leave a message. Um, but, um, um, the, the, a sense that I've gotten that I don't know if this is like a real downer, uh, to, um, but some, sometimes it's been a sense of wondering and, and not really knowing what's next, what to do next, or, or, um, it's definitely, I mean, the, the, um, you know the result of this last election and just the way things have been going reading the news every day uh, it's it's hard for me to know um, what to feel even about it all uh, so but I uh, really I think our participation in the march and our participation since the march has, has Help, helped it be less of a, a just a pure downer, you know, just dealing with all of this, uh, where you know it could it could easily become that, but um, uh, you know, staying involved and watching how it's going, uh, there is more of an energy, uh, 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 an, an energy to what we're doing. Um, Coincidentally, I'm, you know, I meditate at home and sometimes I'm less faithful with that and sometimes more. I've been a lot more faithful with my morning and evening meditation. Uh, than, so that kind of speaks to, you know, we're energized uh, even as we're depressed, sometimes reading what's going on. So do you have a, like a plan either written out or like in your mind about uh where you'd like your activism to sort of grow, or if you would like it to grow? Hmm. Uh, I, uh, I do not have uh, so much of a, uh, a plan. Um, um, like I said, the, the, the way events came together for the Women's March was kind of fortuitous. We are talking about uh, the Science March, and we think it will... Uh, either, no, not the science march, the tax march, April 15th. We're going to be in town, in D.C. Um, around then, there's a, we have a, uh, a grandson birthday coming up. Um, and uh, 
we sometimes, you know, we don't visit one set of grandsons without visiting both. But uh, we'll be there for uh, the tax march. We follow our taxes nice and early. He hasn't. Uh, President Trump hasn't. And that's a very big thing with us. Uh, get those taxes in. Get that Russian connection looked at. And we're definitely going to be at, uh, there at the tax march. Um, I don't know that it'll be anywhere near the, the, the same crowd, but... Uh, uh, um, and, you know, I, I don't think we'll be there physically for the science march, but that's very important to me. I, I want to participate somehow. Um, there is um, one of my... Um, uh, one of my very best friends from when I was working, who she's kind of a, almost, I, I would say she's almost a, a hippie, hippie type activist. And she's uh, just got a lot of good ideas in terms of, you know, the peaceful side of everything. And, you know, basically staying calm, keeping in perspective and not letting a lot of negativity spoil what you're doing. She uh, invited me to some online things where uh, there's this uh, um, activity called, I think, it's, I think the pronunciation is called Puhas for Peace. And you light a candle on a particular night and everyone's lighting a candle and saying a prayer for peace on earth. And, you know, little things like that. So uh, what do you hope will happen in the future based off of these marches and uh, shared activism and shared prayers? Well, there was, there's a sense that I used to have <clears throat> that I don't have right now that America, for all its political differences, we want basically the same thing. I get a sense that we're kind of divided on a lot of the things that we want. And, but participating in the marches and listening to people, and, you know, actually even listening to those friends that are going, oh, come on, you know, and, you know, disagreeing with us. Uh, there is commonality. We, all, we have common lives, common hopes, common dreams. Uh, some of us... Uh, uh, have a lot of implicit societal boosts toward achieving our dreams and some of us don't and my hope is that we'll come around to some of our basic unity you know in, in the human endeavor uh, whether it's for uh women or, you know, for blacks or for the environment or for uh, any number of causes that will realize our commonality and realize our compassion and start working together again and maybe even as a result of that start voting together again and uh, get some better people in to do some better things at the big level while we're working things at the house and home and neighborhood and church and whatever level um, are there is there anything that you fear about this <laughs> oh there's a good bit of fear you know the the um, I mean the, the way the, uh, the latest election came on and when the rhetoric when people in the White House are talking about dismantling the government that's a fearsome thing to hear that and, and uh, is really, really frightening. Um, and uh, I, you know, I don't always know, know what to make of it. And, you know, waking up in the morning with hope rather than despair, that can be a challenge. Um, uh, it, 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 it's all kind of frightening. Um. You've talked about how you're going to sort of continue this activism. Are you going to be continuing to support the mission of the march in these other marches, or do you see them as sort of disparate uh, ideas or movements? Mm. 
Well, I see them kind of, 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 of uh, united against the societal forces that are kind of sending the message, fear the other, fear the, or, or, or push the supremacy of one group over another. Uh, and uh, um, the, 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 the idea of continuing to, to uh, support, the, you know, the fighters among us, the, the ones who have to fight for an equal place at the table. Uh, that that's uh, continuing in its importance to me, and uh, yeah, I think it's it's important to to keep keep going with that. Um, do you feel like the women's march movement is maintaining momentum? It's. Uh, it's hard to say from you know from my own perspective connected via social media to a few things connected via my family and friends network but also living kind of as isolated as we do out you know out in the country um, uh, and uh, um, uh, I will say you know the church we attend take, takes a very non you know they, they don't get political about anything and so sometimes I don't get much of a connection to any, f excuse me, feeling or awareness. I don't watch very much news, you know, above and beyond getting the Washington Post uh, on my computer. Um, and uh, they, they kind of get the big picture. And to the um, loss of the sense of, you know, how you, how, how these populist movements are going. Um, uh, and I say populist, that's my version of populist, I guess. But uh, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to tell where the momentum is. Um, how have you felt about uh, this new regime's activities um, since the march? Uh, I, I really hope that the uh, investigating agencies and the agencies that have gotten the intelligence on things going on that are, are maybe not what they seemed uh, can get some traction on that and get it all straightened out because, like I said, what, what they do and say frightens me and it goes against. It, it's pretty much all of... Uh, the, the cabinet heads that have been selected and mostly approved are, are really people who go against the, the principles in, in the uh, departments that they, they were formed to, to defend the uh, um, um, environment, education, and, and all of that. And it's frightening. This regime, regime uh, frightens me, uh, puzzles me. Um, I can't say puzzles me very much because, yeah, I've been, I've had an undercurrent of awareness that a lot of times the fights that we fought in the 60s and 70s or, you know, been, been fighting for centuries, well, the people who fight on the other side haven't gone away. They've just kind of pushed their fight down and they're doing things quietly, more subtly. And it hasn't gone away. Um, uh, uh, I've seen a couple of, you know, one, one or two scary documentaries pointing out that it's not gone away, and it's been with us for for decades, if not centuries. And um, uh, yeah, it, it it is. It's frightening, and it, it hasn't. Uh, it's it, it's not in time. It's not entirely unexpected, and I guess that, to me, makes me a little ashamed that I didn't do more um, earlier. Um, so, being a new activist, mm -hmm. uh, what would your advice be for anyone who is considering to go to a march in the future? Mm -hmm. um, find the issues that resonate with you the most and uh, 
read up on them, talk about them with with uh, your neighbors. When you find a receptive person and the conversation is you know appropriate for it, talk about the important stuff, not just the uh, time of day sort of stuff, um, and uh, become active in that way, in, in little ways, and and that. Um, that's going to help lead you to the avenues where you can be more active. It's going to infuse the causes you give to, the causes you attend, what you write on your sign. Let it be a natural thing for you. And um, would you suggest any sort of strategies uh, for people to cope with either... Uh, any sort of anxiety that they feel about the marches that they may attend or the aftermath? <laughs> <laughs> um, take a deep breath. Um, find out the um, communities in your area where you do get together with neighbors because, you know, neighbors is, that's your region, that's home and like it was with the march when you listen to the official word about who's out there where they are what they care about that's not the whole story find out the whole story but take that deep breath and then get into it um is there anything else that you'd like to share about your experience either before during or after the march or anything that um we didn't cover here um, well, I, I just, um, I thank God for the opportunity to do this. I thank my family for coming together um, and um, keeping me inspired, keeping me active, too. Um, this is very, not so much for me, uh, for me is it a different thing because I, you know, I talk a good game and have for years. I talk incessantly sometimes. But, um, you know, be participating in it and I thank my family for helping uh, and my friends uh, you know, at work, my co-workers, uh, for you know, waking me up to things and keeping me... Uh, helping me become an activist you, you, uh, af after a long period where I couldn't. Yeah. It sounds like you have a, a good support system mm -hmm. there. Thank you. Um, I have one more question for you that I just off the top of my okay. head. It sounds like you've been uh, pretty active and not just um, calling on the uh, national level but also on the local level. Mm -hmm. um, what are some local issues that you've been uh, calling or writing about? Um, the uh, well, at the Georgia level, uh, they they have their own um, opinions and votes and, and regarding redistricting. You know, that's a, a messy, messy topic because you know, yeah, uh, uh, you draw the districts um, when you're in power to keep yourself in power. And I remember uh, listening to public radio uh, on election night uh, to some of the folks up in Tennessee. Uh, one of the guys who won the election uh, thought he was going to get a little bit of a laugh from the audience by thanking the guy who redrew the districts for him. You could have heard a pin drop but then he just kind of moved on from that and I, and I thought oh how fortunate that I was listening in at that time um, the, the you know the um, the uh, attempts to sway votes and and, and the uh, political concentration that way it's very important at the local level um, um, I mean you can think of it in terms of the National Electoral College and all of that but a lot of it happens locally. A lot of it is state and county uh, uh, issues, and um, that's that's the main uh, the the main as local as I get. I think is at the state level. Uh, the uh, the what, the attitudes toward healthcare and education. I come from a family of school teachers, 
that, uh, and they are public school teachers, and uh, their, uh, their, their worries about, you know, what's happened, what's coming down the pike, those have been local concerns too, because uh, uh, I, um, I went to a state college, and uh, um, um, the, the, con the local concerns about privatization, about how industry develops and environment reacts to it. Yeah, that is at the state level um, and in, at the local levels. Um, and um, I'm encouraged sometimes locally when uh, I see a lot of the, the greener initiatives. A friend of mine who will vote conservative right down the line still, uh, he's putting up solar panels and this has to be self-sufficient and that's a great thing. Um, and yeah, that's 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 how I've uh, been in touch locally. Okay. Um, do you think that you talking to your neighbors about green energy has had an impact hmm. in their leanings or their thoughts about that? No, I I don't know. Uh, I've been more more of a follower than a leader with that. I mean, we go to we go and recycle, and uh, but then we uh, are. Um, our power company is an energy cooperative, and uh, and that's a good thing. But that's pretty much a circumstance of where you know where we chose to buy a house. Um, so I, you know, I've I've been more influenced than I've been influencing. That's about all I got. Um, all right. If there's anything else that you'd like to add, now's the time. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. I'm fine. Okay. Thank it was great talking to you. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. <laughs>